let's take a look at the first exercise. Alright, we found us back in the other once more, and in this tutorial, we're actually going to be talking about an exercise over here. So this is going to involve viewer participation. So the first exercise, you will find that in the description below in a gist, basically just the description of the exercise. And then there's also going to be a solution, and I also will show the solution after this. However, I really highly recommend, if you really want to learn Java, you have to try some stuff on your own. You can't just be copying the tutorials over and over again. You have to start thinking about these things on your own so let's see what the first exercise over here is so you should create a calculator that runs multiple times until you manually break out of it think about how you can achieve that then the user can input something so first the operation should be read in and then the first and then the second number those two numbers then being you know depending on the operation being added subtracted or multiplied or even divided so that is one thing that you want to do here and of course, depending on the operation, you have to have a different result. You can think about if statements or a switch statement. Either of those are going to work. One of them is going to be a little bit longer in that case, but both of them would be totally fine. And that's quite important when you're reading in a string, you want to use scanner.next. We've seen the scanner thing previously, but you want to use next in this case. And also when you are comparing a string, right, when you have a string s over here, you want to do s.equals and then put in the string over here. That will return you a Boolean. You do not want to use the equals operator over here, as this might lead to some issues. And then at the end, after the result has been output, you want to ask the user if they want to continue. And if not, you just end the program. For beginners, I will put this at an estimated amount between 30 to 45 minutes. It really should not take longer than this. It might take significantly less than that. In this time, I would also bake in about a good 10 or 15 minutes to go back to some other previous tutorials to basically take a look at some different things that you might have forgotten or you need to refresh on. So that is totally fine. But yeah, the basic idea is that you want to build a very easy calculator. You ask the user to type in a, an operation, then you then you read in the first number, then you read in the second number, and then you output the result depending on the operation chosen. Like I said, I highly recommend you try this. So just stop the video, go back if you want to revisit a couple of other tutorials before this, and then we're going to take a look at the solution. All right, so here we have one possible solution. Once again, if yours looks completely different, that is fine. As long as the actual functionality of the program works, I'm totally happy with this, right? So if all of this works exactly how you wanted it to, then that would be totally fine. Now, in my case, I define a scanner, of course, because we need to read stuff in. That's fair enough. And I define it outside of the while loop over here, because in this case, we just need to define it once and then not, not every time we rerun the program in this case, now the while loop over here says while true because I basically want to continue to do this until I get to the end over here where the scanner next does not equal y. So basically if I put in a y then we're going to continue and rerun the while loop and if it is not y then we're going to break out of the loop basically ending the program. And then here you can see we're typing in an operation either plus or plus or minus or minus multiply multiply or divide or divide then the first number then the second number then we have an integer result right here. We have a switch statement and you can see we put in multiple cases in the same line over here because plus and plus basically are the same thing. And the result is being set to number plus number, number one plus number two. And then at the end over here, your result is number one plus the operation plus number two. And then that gets you the result. And then that is it. So if we were to go through this, you can see type in your operation, let's say minus over here. And we want to do 50 minus, let's say 12. And you can see, bam, your result is 50 minus 12, which is 38. You want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. Let's do another calculation, maybe a times over here. I can multiply 150 times 50, and that is 7,500. I do not wish to continue, so it doesn't matter what I type in. The process is going to finish as soon as I do not type in the small y, the lowercase y. So as I've said, this is just one example of how you could do this. If your program works the exact same way and the result works, then your example, of course, would pass, let's say. If it looks exactly like this, I guess we have a very similar way our brain works. You could, of course, also do this with if statements, which will result in a little bit of a longer programming in this case, but line count really doesn't say anything about a program. So no worries at all. And that is one example of the solution over here. Right, but that's already it for this exercise over here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about the ternary operator. Very interesting indeed. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.